out into the camera. Okay, I'm going to be talking about uh, canine lymphoma. Pretty much this is what I'm going to be going over uh, about what exactly it is, known types, causes, symptoms, how it's diagnosed, uh, how it's treated, and what an owner can expect from the disease. <clears throat> the lymphoma is essentially a blanket term for a, a group of cancers that target lymphocytes or white blood cells that help to fight off infection and disease. The majority of lymphomas will be centered in the spleen, bone marrow, and lymph nodes. Uh, these are actually some of the most common cam cancers seen in dogs. Uh, canine lymphomas are pretty much identical to non-Hodgkin's lymphomas in humans, and as a result, there is a lot of uh, research in, in them, so we know a lot. <clears throat> They're also, they constitute probably like 7 to 14 percent of uh, cancers seen in dogs. And dogs are two to five times more likely to develop some type of them. Uh, this picture here is a, uh, these are just some of the lymph nodes that uh, often are easier to, you know, palpitate and try to uh, detect because uh, these are the ones like in small animals that we can get to that aren't internal, more internal. So there are four main types of lymphomas. Um, the first of these and the most common is multicentric. Uh, it makes up 80 to 85 percent of all cases and it targets the lymph nodes of the animal. Uh, I'm pretty much going to be talking mostly about that one. Uh, the second most common, which is about 10 percent of cases, is alimentary lymphomas, which are observed in the intestines. Alimentary lymphomas are really difficult to treat and diagnose because it's contained in the digestive tract. Uh, mediastinal uh, lymphomas are very rare and focused on the thymus or the mediastinal lymph nodes in the chest. In some cases, both uh, the lymph, both the thymus and the mediastinal lymph nodes are affected. Finally, extranodal lymphomas uh, generally target a specific organ like the skin, and uh, lymphoma in the skin is known as cutaneous lymphoma. So currently, not much is known about the specific causes of lymphomas in dogs because with most cancer, they could be multifactorial. Uh, most of the studies conducted in laboratory settings are investigating the effects of different factors like viruses and bacteria, um, as well as physical, physical um, factors like exposure to radiation and the presence of strong magnetic fields. Genetics are also thought to <clears throat> play a role in the chances of an animal to develop some form of lymphoma, as well as exposure to certain chemicals like paint, solvents, pesticides, <clears throat> and herbicides. Actually, golden retrievers are one of the most susceptible breeds, according to a study that I saw during my research. The most common symptom that aligns with most types of lymphoma is the presence of uh, these firm and large lymph nodes here. Um, they're not painful to the animal, so they're somewhat harder to detect if you don't see your animal all that often. Uh, they're usually found in the submandibular or under the jaw area or popliteal region, which is behind the, the back knee. Um, some other reported symptoms are loss of appetite, uh, lethargy, uh, weight loss, and increased thirst and urination. Diagnosing lymphoma in its early stages is really difficult, but doing so gives the animal a, a much better chance of achieving partial or complete remission. Most often, the cancer is advanced quite a bit before it's actual, actually been diagnosed. Uh, lymphoma does require a tissue sample of the affected area to, under, uh, to undergo a cytology exam for it to actually be diagnosed. <clears throat> There's one test that I found which helps to die well, discriminate between which one is, uh, whether it's malignant or not, but uh, it's called PCR antigen Recep receptor rearrangement test, or PARR. Pretty much it's a diagnostic tool that's used to discriminate between, between the processes that are malignant and benign. Uh, lymphoma does progress rapidly, so decisions about treatment need to be made no later than two days after diagnosis. So, in terms of treatment, there are several options for treatment of lymphoma. Uh, chemotherapy is most used, and most dogs will respond well to it. 
However, the cost can vary greatly from $3,500 to $10,000 for six months of treatment, depending on where exactly you get have it done and how often they do it. <clears throat> uh, the Madison, Wisconsin protocol, or UW25, also known as the CHOP treatment, uh, it's a combination of drugs that are pretty much, uh, they model the treatment that we use in human lymphoma patients. Uh, it's considered the most effective treatment for intermediate to high grade lymphomas. Uh, it uses three chem chemotherapy drugs, which are cyclophosphamide, do doxorubicin, and ventricine, or oncovin in in combination with prednisone. Uh, prednisone is usually given daily at home while the other three drugs are given by an oncolo oncology specialist. Uh, in dogs with lymphoma, seven to 90 percent are expected to achieve remission within the first month. This one, uh, bone marrow transplant, I actually found recently. Um, there's, it's one of the newest treatment methods available for canine uh, lymphomas. It's also modeled after the procedure used in humans. Um, pretty much the animal is going to be subject, subjected to the Madison, Wisconsin protocol treatment and to put the cancer into remission. After that, they'll harvest uh, to preserve healthy stem cells. Uh, then they'll administer radiation to destroy cancer cells and then return the healthy cells back to the animal to restore healthy blood cells. Uh, this is extremely expensive and there's only two places in the United States that currently offer this treatment. Uh, the North Carolina State College of Veterinary Medicine and Bellingham uh, Veterinary C Critical Care in Washington State. <clears throat> so for prognosis, um, firstly dogs that develop any form of intestinal lymphoma have an extremely poor chance of surviving the disease. Uh, that is uh, under the second type that I talked about, the alimentary lymphomas. Most dogs with lymphoma who don't receive treatment will just succumb to the disease after four to six weeks. Uh, there's not a large chance of being cured for these types of cancers, but there have been survivors in the past. And uh, bone marrow transplants are seeing a lot of attention, and currently they're the most promising treatment in regards to cure rate. Uh, in the future, hopefully we'll see uh, those numbers increase and as we learn more about them, uh, its causes and treatment strategies, hopefully also. And you're ready for a round of applause, a soft round of applause. Questions, comments? I just have one comment. Be careful when you're out there in the real world because sometimes people misdiagnose cancer and then the animal or person is subjected to the treatment then the patient is declared cancer-free after the treatment, but sometimes when they go back and look at tissue that was collected, it was misdiagnosed as cancer in the first place, so you didn't really hear the cancer that the patient had because there was a misdiagnosis, and there are examples of that definitely in the human population. Uh, years ago, everybody was mad at the prostate gland, and it was too much prostate cancer was diagnosed and it was just simply benign prostatic hypertrophy and you should know that the old men, well actually got this to look forward to, old men and old dogs, their prostate gland tends to enlarge but a lot of times it's BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy, but sometimes it's misdiagnosed as cancerous and there have been, there's people out there that have went through the treatment and then are declared cancer free, but if you really look at it, it was a misdiagnosis at the beginning. So whenever you see something about cure rate for certain treatments, <coughs> go back and look at the data, you know, if you can, the tissue samples or whatever, and say, and have somebody other than the person that initially did it get a second opinion. <coughs> 